Hello, everybody. Um, today we're going to be starting a new rule from Jordan, Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. This is going to be uh, rule number three. Uh, make friends with people who want the best for you. Um, I just want to say something really quickly here. Um, as I'm doing this channel, um, I'm not... You never know want to call somebody ugly, okay? I don't normally always look like this. I don't normally always have a shaved head. I don't normally have huge glasses that are like this thick. And also, there's one other. Oh yeah, I gained 35 pounds this year within a um, six months period after I quit smoking. This isn't about my looks. This is about uh, the, my reading ability, my talent, my ability to tell jokes and to read and to explain information. It's what I get paid to do uh, working as a teacher and a private tutor. And I'm sharing it for free with you on YouTube. So I appreciate um, any der derogatory comments. Uh, please take them elsewhere. And, um, and that's it. Uh, and while not, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Thanks. Okay, once again, uh, rule number three, make friends with people who want the best for you. The old hometown. The town I grew up in had been scraped only 50 years earlier out of the endless, flat northern prairie. I guess that's something they do in Canada. Fairview, Alberta was part of the frontier and, the, and had the cowboy bars to prove it. The Hudson Bay Company's department store on Main Street still bought beaver, wolf, and coyote furs directly from the local trappers. Wow, that's weird. 3,000 people lived there, 400 miles away from the nearest city. Cable TV, video games, and internet did not exist. It was no easy matter to stay innocently amused in Fairview, particularly during the five months of the winter when long stretches of 40 below days and even colder nights were the norm. I don't know why anybody would live there. <laughs> I live in Hawaii. Much better. The wor oh, but uh, we're kind of crowded, so don't come here. Okay, the world is a different place uh, when it's cold like that. The drunks in our town ended their sad lives early. They passed out in snow banks at 3 in the morning and froze to death. Wow, he's not even kidding. You don't go outside. See, another, way alcohol, another way that alcohol has surprised me that it kills. I know alcohol kills, but I never thought it killed like that. They passed out in snowbanks at 3 in the morning and froze to death. You don't go outside casually when it's 40 below. On first breath, the air or desert air constricts your lungs. Ice forms on your eyelashes and they stick together. Long hair, wet from the shower, freezes solid, and then stands on end, wrath like its own accord later in a warm house. When it thaws bone dry, charged with electricity. I, um, I've never been in weather like colder than like 20 degrees. I, uh, that's why I, one reason, one major reason I live in Hawaii, because I don't like cold weather. Enough about me. Children only put their tongues on steel playground equipment once. <laughs> he just says that, that's so cool. Smoke from house chimneys doesn't rise. Smoke from house chimneys doesn't rise. Defeated by the cold, it drifts downward and collects like fog on snow-covered rooftops and yards. Cars must be... Why do we live there? Why would anyone live there? Cars must be plugged in at night. Their engines worn by block heaters or oil will not flow through them in the morning and they won't start. Sometimes they won't anyways. Then you turn the engine over pointlessly, over pointlessly until the starter clatters and falls silent. Then you remove the frozen battery from the car, loosening bolts with stiffening fingers in the intense cold and bring it into the house. It sits there, sweating for hours until it warms up enough to hold a decent charge. You are not going to see out the back window of your car, either. It frosts over in November and stays that way until May. Scraping it off just dampens the upholstery. Then it's frozen, too. Later one night, going to visit a friend, I sat for two hours on the edge of a passenger seat in a 1970 Dodge Challenger, jammed up against the steep stick shift, using a vodka-soaked rag to keep the inside of the front windshield clear in front of the driver because the car heater had quit. Stopping wasn't an option. There was nowhere to stop. And it was hell on house cats. What? Felines in Fairview had short ears and tails because they had lost their tips of both to frostbite. They had lost their tips of both to frostbite. Wow. They came to resemble Arctic foxes. This is an interesting part of evolution. If you believe in that kind of thing. Arctic foxes, which evolved those features to, to deal proactively with the intense cold. One day our cat got outside and no one noticed. We found him later, fur frozen fast to the cold, hard back door cement steps where he sat. We carefully separated cat from concrete with no lasting damage except to his pride. Fairview cats were also at great risk in the winter from cars. 
but not for the reasons you think. It wasn't automobiles sliding on icy roads and running them over. Only loser cats died that way. It was cars parked immediately. <laughs> it was cars parked immediately after being driven that were dangerous. A frigid cat might think highly of climbing up to such a vehicle and sitting on its still warm engine block. But what if the driver decided to use the car again before the engine cooled down and the cat departed? Let's just say that heat-seeking house pets and rapidly rotating radiator fans do not coexist happily. Because we were so far north, the bitterly cold winters were also very dark. By December, the sun didn't rise until 9.30 a.m. We trudged to school in the pitch black. It wasn't much lighter when we walked, or walked home just before the early sunset. There wasn't much for young people to do in Fairview, even in the summer, but in the winter, the, the winters were worse. Then your friends mattered more than anything. That was uh, from Dr. Peterson's book, 12 Rules of Life.